so uh, today's class we will be uh, dealing with uh, to getting started with the uh, sketchup then how to do some preliminary settings so that which is more comfortable for you to use it then understanding the interface of sketchup then how to save the file auto saving it then to check the units okay so uh, and then i will be teaching you some pan orbit zoom commands along with drawing tools then coming on to the construction tools and then customizing the shortcuts okay then we will have a 15 minutes doubt clearance session as well cool so i'll just uh, go to the sketchup now so when you come to when you open sketchup 2000 uh, this is 2020 which i have any any more any uh, any year if you open it you will get such an interface coming up okay the thing that you have to do is there are some templates out here got it architecture millimeter symbol inches symbol meter or uh, architecture inches architecture centimeter and so on and below that you will find some recent files mostly in your case it will not be there okay because you have not opened it or you have not saved any file got it so in this i have basically marked i have just uh, you can basically click uh, on this you will see some heart sign coming out which means that it is some of your favorite or you can keep it as favorite i normally consider architecture millimeters which is the best for me because i normally work in milli uh, i am metric system i normally work in okay so you guys can also uh, che uh, check that yeah if you are if you are a person who works with inches or foot you can also go for architecture inches as well okay and now i uh, now you should press on that uh, just click on it right click on top of the uh, image that is given it will now open up onto a interface like this okay got it so next what i will tell you is about the interface which is there so most if you are not finding this interface like this or you are not getting this toolbar out here you are not seeing this or you are not getting this default ray and the measurement out here don't panic there are some preliminary settings that i am suggesting you to do that is go to the view on the menu bar out here on the top go to view select toolbar okay and you will see some some uh, names being coming up so go check this box called large toolbar okay and then also check measurement so that the down measurement also comes checked then check views okay these three you need to check from the toolbar clear no doubts fine okay so then if you are not having this default tray like it will not be there like this okay then what to do is go to windows default tray click on show tray so that this tray will get appeared and in this tray i would suggest you to check these entities like info entity materials components styles tags seed shadows or instructor if you are a new newer uh, if you as you are a beginner i would suggest you to take this instructor as well because what happens is in down part you will basically get the something like this as well in the case of an instructor is this one so it will be easier for you to understand what this object or what this pointer or whatever you are selected is gonna do okay so i insist any beginner to use this instructor tool also checked in got it then next so now you will get a proper interface like this got it so next is we'll do a saving of this file the most important thing that you need to do is save the file before starting any project because once you don't save it it is gonna have a lot of problems because uh, or else you will basically create a really good model and end up uh, missing that okay so go to files save as and you can go to i suggest you to save in a drive okay so that you can get it recovered if any problem happens to your lap as well okay so file name i'm typing it as sketchup trial saving it press save so that this file gets saved 
next thing what you have to do is go to windows go to model info okay and uh, go uh, go to units okay and check go to units check what are the measurements it is been using because sometimes you may have different different units being measured being used make sure that whichever unit you are using is uh, either in millimeter or inches whichever you prefer the most okay don't keep on changing it because at last it will end up having a lot of problems in your model so check this okay check it into millimeters meter square everything make it in a single unit okay and then close it this is the second check i would suggest you to do while doing sketchup third is again go to windows go to preferences okay here there is general an option known as general tick create backup tick auto save and make it every 5 minutes out here because if you don't create it you are sketchup model is uh, uh, you need to always press control s in between okay or else uh, so that uh, at times if it is any 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 bug splash is going to happen then your model is not going to get saved and then you are ending up going to lose a file as well so i would suggest you to check tick this uh, check this create backup check auto save and make it every 5 minutes okay here here just type 5 minutes or uh, how much time you want like how much time like 5 or 10 i suggest 5 because it is best okay and press okay and keep it this much is required as a initial stage of using the sketchup fine every this much is clear for everyone any doubts just tell me any doubts hello no sir no doubts okay fine i'll then go forward next is uh, regarding the tools if you click on this select tool out here select this means you will come up with a black arrow okay what is the uh, or also there is a short command in the keyboard for this tool that is known as space bar okay so that is the first key that comes about in the sketchup and i will introduce to you uh, uh, this camera settings first because that is the most important thing that you need for rotating or you need for doing this stuffs na in sketchup for moving it left and right and so you require something known as a camera tool that is this you if you go down 1 2 3 4 and 5th one fifth set of tools available in this uh, long toolbar is called as a camera tools okay the first tool in that is known as orbit if you click it you will come across a, a unit known as uh, a tool like this okay and you can see out in the instructor what it does it what it does is that it rotates in an axis it helps you rotate in axis in an particular axis got it so left and right also i would suggest you to use the shortcut instead of going and pressing it every time that is in the central scroll button of your mouse if you click the central scroll button again you will see the same this thing coming up keep pressing it whenever you use it if that is the easiest method the easiest method is go press the central scroll button so that if you move the mouse along with it you will see that it happening and if you leave it it will come back to the select tool got it second is the pan tool pan tool is used if you click pan this is the hand type one uh, your one cursor will come up so that will help you to move from left to right top to bottom like this it okay so this helps you in moving the space that is the uh, area that has been there okay so there is a short command for that the short command is press shift if you have this uh, the select and tool press shift and then if you press the central scroll button the hands comes up okay 
I suggest you to use the mouse itself and not to use this uh, going to the toolbar and selecting because it makes it easier to work. Okay, while working on large projects or so, this becomes easier because the, uh, pressing the shift and then the central scroll button helps you move. And if you press the central scroll button, you can basically move as orbit. Okay, fine. Next is the zoom. Come zoom. If you press the zoom, then if you uh, click on the left. Uh, if you click on the uh, left tool, left uh, mouse button, and if you go up and down, basically it zooms in. If the best option is just use the send scroll button that is there provided on your mouse. If you scroll in, scroll out, you can basically do that. That is the that is the easiest thing, and rather than using this uh, tool which is given. Third is, sorry, fourth is the window zoom. Windows Zoom, what it does is that if you are having a large project and suddenly you need to see a particular part of it. So what you do is select this tool, go uh, click off on your uh, left, left mouse button, just click it and then make a rectangle. Okay. And when you leave it, you will see suddenly what happened is just zoomed into that part. So that is what we, uh, zoom win windows does. Got it. And next is the zoom extend. Zoom extend for that. I'll just show you something. Uh, just skip what I am doing. Don't worry. I will I will teach you how to do this stuff. This is just to show you what zoom extend does. If you get trapped, sometimes when you are modeling, you will get trapped like this. In this situation, where in which you don't know where you are standing. Got it. So for you to come out of such a situation, you just need to press the zoom extend. So what happens is that suddenly you will come to an interface where in which it covers the entire model. Okay. So uh, that is what zoom extend does. So that is one important tool that you need to uh, look into. Fine. Then come to preview. Preview is it goes to the before what was your camera setting that will come. If you press like if I was here and if I press this preview, it will come back to the previous one which was there. Fine. So that much is about the camera setting tool which is here. So I have covered six tools. Any doubts till now? Any doubts? No, sir. No doubts. Anyone having any doubts? Please tell because I can repeat it. It's fine for me. Okay. Fine. If no doubts, then I'll just go forward. Next is regarding the selection tool. I have just told you just a intro about the selection tool, what it does. Okay. Selection tool. I'll tell you the method of it using is there are like around five methods that is uh, of selecting the stuffs. First is if you want to select just an edge or anything that is in one dimension, that is if you are having a, a, a object like this and you need to select a one dimension of it. So what you need to do is single click on that element. So you will see that that only that element gets uh, get selected. If you want the 2D of it to be selected, that is the plane. Then what you need to do is double click on it so that the plane gets selected. If you check, if you could go to any plane, if you select double click it, you will see that the plane gets selected. Got it. So if you need to select the entire 3D, what to be done is that you need to triple click. Okay. So when you triple click it, you see that the entire object gets selected. So this is the selecting process. I'll tell you in what if you want to select one dimensional object single click if you want to do dub, uh, 2D you have to select do double click on your mouse if you want to do uh, if you want to select the 3D triple click on it okay that is how you do this and the next way of selecting is if you if you could see that if you uh, left click it and you drag you see that from left to right, if you drag, you see there is a continuous line coming up. 
and from left to right if you go you see it happens is that it happens like a dotted line the meaning is that i'll show you what it does if you do from left to right and select you see whatever is there inside that whichever element is there inside it gets selected like i'll tell you once more like if you come from left to right if you see only this plane is inside this box okay so only that will get selected if you move the other way round like this what happens is anything that is coming inside this box like anything inside this box will get selected got it any doubts in this no sir fine okay this is about the selection tool then coming on to the drawing tools out here fine the drawing tools is there is something known as line there is freehand rectangle rotate uh, rotate uh, uh, rotated uh, rectangle circle polygon arc 2r 3r and pi okay so the first is the line in line the method of using this i would also suggest you to use the arrow keys okay in your keyboard the arrow keys the top left and right arrow keys to be used why is it necessary is that this helps you to go parallel to the axis that is being used if you could see there is three axis out here a green color red color and a blue color you guys have seen that so this is the three axis that is there this is the xy plane and the blue is the z plane so if you want to draw anything parallel to the uh, green plane a uh, green line so what you have to do is the left arrow key need to be pressed then if you then if you if you if you could see that if you draw the line if you click first by with your left uh, left mouse then you see that a you can see a line being generated okay and if you need it to be parallel to the green just bring it then you will see something like a green line coming up if you could see as it is not here i'll just show, go to the red line if it is a red color which is coming means it is parallel to this line if a blue color is coming means it is parallel to the z plane is it plane got it so that is what it represents so at times you can also do is that press the left arrow key it automatically becomes locked in that plane or a parallel to that uh, line okay if you press the right arrow key it will get locked on to the red uh, red line parallel to the red line if you press the red uh, sorry the top arrow key what happens is it will get locked on to the top got it this i will suggest you to use because most of the time while working this this arrow keys most of the people don't know and because of that you will mess up your model making okay like uh, if you if you don't use the arrow key what will happen is i'll just simply show you if you uh, sometimes it will be in different planes like this it will not be in a single single plane okay so that will happen if you don't use the arrow key got it so next i'll uh, show you how to draw it okay just first click second click you can basically use the arrow key and basically click the second or you can type in the uh, if you if you could see here the length out here you can just type the uh, required amount like if i am now typing less like 5000 and pressing enter you can see that the a line that is of 5000 mm is been drawn out got it so if you again if you could like if you use the arrow keys left arrow key i am getting locked it with the this uh, the parallel to the green axis and then i am typing 5000 and entering got it then again i am want to draw parallel to this so it's and if i want to draw parallel to this uh, blue axis press the top arrow key and then type 5000 and press enter got it so you will get something like you can basically start making the shapes fine this is how you use the line tool 
okay second is the free hand this tool is rarely used because it doesn't give much importance while model making but it is like you can use your right arrow key and just simply keep on keep keep it like that and like you just need to uh, keep pressing on the left arrow key and then simply keep drawing got it that is how this is like a scribble tool if you scribble it you basically get something like this you can just scribble on got it that is what is the use of this it's a free hand tool you can freely draw with this fine next is the rectangle tool so uh, this is uh, guys just listen carefully because uh, this there are two types of rectangles okay one is the end rectangle and the other is for drawing with the help of a center cent central cent central point to be taken for drawing and the end point to be taken for drawing okay i'll tell you both just um, be with me first point just click wherever you want to start second point will be the place where you want to click for the second you just can click in between you can basically use the arrow keys so as to make it perpendicular to any plane that is there okay if you want to be perpendicular to this uh, axis just click the top you will see it becoming darker okay a blue color line becoming darker if you press the left arrow key you will see it becoming perpendicular to the green axis and if you press the uh, right arrow key it become perpendicular to the red axis got it now i am just using the top arrow key and then you just drawing it okay so then if you again one more thing to be noticed is if there is a diagonal dotted line coming onto your uh, rectangle this means that it is gonna generate a square not a rectangle that is if you could see the dimension down here if a, a, di a diagonal dotted line of blue is coming or any dotted line diagonal is coming means that it is a square you can say see the value like it is 8003 comma 8003 down here okay so that means that it is gonna be a square also you you can basically press at the second point then also it will generate a square or you can also do is that press the first second point instead of uh, pressing it you can just type in the amount that you want that is if you want for x axis you want 5000 and in the y axis you want 5000 you can just type 5000 comma 5000 and press enter you can basically get the square of the proper dimension got it this is one method till here any doubts for anyone no doubts okay i'll uh, move to the second method of using the um, rectangle that is if you click rectangle if you press control if you could see my the the cursor that is the uh, pencil and a rectangle is been there with the edge of the pencil being at the end point if you press control you can see that it just shifted towards the center abhi okay that means that now you are drawing a rectangle with the center of it being used okay so this also basically if you want to access and y same method just second click you will basically generate the rectangle okay so i just want a 5000 comma 5000 i am here also i am just making it okay this is the second method of producing a rectangle got it now we will go for the rotated rectangle rotated rectangle means that if you want a rectangle at an angle to the axis that out here okay so what you need is press the rectangle out here rotated rectangle and you will see something like a uh, protractor coming up okay so press the first second you can basically either type in or you can click for the second point either you can click on the second point or you can type in now i am typing so that it is more precise okay 5000 i am using i am pressing enter okay so next is that it is telling you that you can if you could could see this measurement tool out here in this box you can see that it is showing a dimension comma the angle fine dimension comma angle means that if you want a you want the width of it it so now i am gonna type the width that is 5000 
and comma the angle angle means the amount it needs to be turned okay like this amount that is to be turned okay at an angle of 30 degree let it be so if i am typing 5000 comma 30 and pressing enter you can see something like this you will create a you will have a plane that has been 30 degree now basically i press okay i'll just do it in this axis so it is more clearer okay okay now i'm taking 5000 comma 30 okay if you could see this look this is at an angle okay this this is the plane if you could see this is at an angle got it it is at an angle 30 degree fine so this is how you make the rotated uh, rotated rectangle fine this much any doubts because now it is gonna be little more some more complex because of it being come to circles and so on till this much any doubts for anyone if you do not understand this just tell me fine cool no doubts then i'll just carry explain on. the rotated uh, rectangle again okay fine just go press rotated rectangle you can basically use the arrows key so as to lock in just click the first point second point basically it is parallel to the green axis so that is why the green line is coming i'm just typing the amount that is 5000 and pressing the enter okay next is that this basically is used if you could see it is trying to have two commands that is one is a width that is it is for the width and the second is basically the angle got it okay so that's why i'm just typing now i am just typing it as you can either click as well as you can type it so now i'm just typing 5000 comma 30 okay so now because of i pressing it in the downwards direction it went down if you would have pressed it in the if you would have kept it in the upward direction then it would have gone upward 30 degree okay fine this is basically at an angle 30 degree downwards okay fine yeah okay cool second is now i am going to write uh, the circle tool okay so if you press circle or the short command is c okay if you could use a keyboard it is fine then if you could see there is something called sides coming up you can enter the sides as well i would suggest you to type 99 because that is the perfect circle or you can also type in the if you type what happens if you in the circle if you type 6 or 5 what happens is that in sketchup it will not be a smooth surface like i'll show you like what happens is if you press like if i'm having 15 and pressing enter and then if i'm clicking on the center and breaking you could see that this is not a perfect circle so you could see that it is divided into 15 segments that is what is the 15 that i'm playing i'll once more i'll tell you select sides select this circle then you will see down here sides coming up okay before clicking anywhere type the side how much sides you want okay if you press 3 it will become a triangle if you press 4 it will become a rectangle if you press 5 it will become a pentagon uh, it will become a pentagon then 6 hexagon and so on Pro perfect circle 99 type and then press enter okay and then click and then draw if you could see now it is a perfect circle okay that is how you draw a circle in the uh, in sketchup you can also use the arrow key so as to use it perpendicular to any axis got it like this if you am pressing the uh, left arrow key or the right left arrow key and then clicking it will be perpendicular to this if you press the uh, uh, left arrow key and then it will be perpendicular to the green plane got it fine that is how you can use the circle tool and then the polygon so the polygon is similar to the circle because if you click polygon it will ask for the sides okay in circle also i did the sides i typed the sides basically you require to type the sides in this polygon it is again a same tool of circle itself i don't know why they repeated it but you can just type 8 and then enter and then basically use it similar to circles if you press 99 you'll get a circle itself got it in this uh, polygon tool.
fine any doubts till now because circle and polygon is almost similar any doubts no doubts okay fine sir to draw a circle should be compulsory 99 or anything above 99 I, is fine. I, I, I'll tell you because I'll tell you to use 19. If you do 100 and plus also, it's fine. But the load of your file gets more. Okay. Because I'll suggest you something like 99. You can go for 50. If you don't want a proper circle, when you are basically making the walls, the walls will never be proper circles. Okay. It will be like a small bricks that are basically making the circle Anna, in the walls of a building or so. So here in this case if you use 99 is fine you can use like 100 120 or so but the file size will get increased as you increase the number of sites got it so that's why i suggest you not to go above the number which i've told okay fine clear yes sir. okay cool now let us go to arc there are like one two three arcs and one pi pi is i'll go to pi first if you click pi then again a protractor coming in first click second click is basically the dimension how much uh, area that like how much distance you want for the second line to come there uh, just consider this point as the center of a pi okay center of a circle and the second point is the outer perimeter of the circle okay now i'm just typing uh, 5000 i'm pressing enter then if you now if you could turn it Basically, the angle, you, you should mention the angle. I am mentioning 120 out here. Angle and pressing enter. You could see there is a pi that is, that is a sector is being formed. Okay, a pi of a circle is being formed. This is what the pi tool does. Second is this tool, that is the arc tool. The arc tool does the same function which I told for the pi, but it does not form the surface like this. Okay, I'll show you. Take the R, press it, first click, second click, type 5000, press enter, third click, a third, you can either click it or you can type 120 and press enter. You can see it formed the arc but it did not form the pi. Okay, got it? So that is what arc and this pi are difference. Third tool is a two point arc. Two point arc means if you have, if you have a circle. Okay the circles two ends if you want and then if you want the two sides the two edges that uh, take take the first point to be the outer first and the second points to be the outer uh, outer of the circle and the third point is also in the outer of the circle okay because that the third point basically determines the uh, curvature that is required for your circle okay so first point i'm clicking second flowing either you can type in or you can basically click for the second point i'm now clicking and the third is basically the bulge got it the bulge of the circle that you require if you could see at the moment that i'm doing okay you could see the bulge that is coming up so now if i want like only this much or this much this is really useful tool okay when you are basically making arches or like uh, stuffs in your model this is really useful okay you can either you can use the arrow key so as to determine the uh, movement of this as well okay if you press the top arrow key you could see it going up as well okay to press the arc will be in the upper side as well got it third is the three point arc this is like if you click first second and third basically third first point second point the third point is of it goes like you can basically increase the size or decrease the size got it it basically depends on the angle that is you want to do fine so this much is what is in this drawing tool fine any doubts till now hello any doubts okay so no doubts i guess if you guys are having any doubts now nah, after the class or anything you can just whatsapp me or you can just Put it in the group so that i can basically tell to you what uh, what you can do or i'll just help you guys out as well if you are facing any problem okay cool so next i'll tell you one more thing that is about customizing the shortcuts basically for line tool there's a short command if you press l it automatically becomes the pencil okay second for rectangle if you type r it will automatically become a rectangle 
for circle if you press c it will should become circle okay you don't need to go to this toolbar so as to take and then draw in the keyboard itself you can type p if you do so if you go for uh, a you can basically make the arc for arc so they are like short commands i will give you the pdf like in the drive that i have shared with you there is a uh, there is a folder that is called uh, shortcuts okay that is there you can go through that as well these short commands are also present there fine so uh, there i'll give you a, a option one more option that is creating shortcuts okay customizing the shortcuts for this we go and go to windows go to preferences out here you can see shortcuts you can assign shortcuts for any tool that you require you can basically click that now if you want to see that if there is a rectangle i'll show tool um, draw tool line if you could see that for line out here l is already assigned you can change it okay if you want to change it from l to something else you can change it you can change many but there are some limitations because like uh, uh, short, uh like there is a uh, there is a tool known as um, follow me that does not allow you to give short commands okay some you can basically customize according to your wish some you can't in this okay so if you want you can customize according to your wish as well the short commands fine and then you can press okay got it so this much i'm teaching for today's class if any doubts are there you can ask me right now